Today we are going to explore the warnings in the Bible that makes us prepare for the last days. As we explore the scriptures, we will discover the timeless wisdom and guidance that can help us navigate these uncertain times. So, let's begin by understanding what the Bible says about the signs that indicate the approaching last days. Jesus himself gave us insights in Matthew 24, where he spoke about wars, famines, earthquakes, and various tribulations. These are not to instill fear, but to awaken us to the reality of our need for spiritual preparedness. The Bible warns us about the moral and spiritual decay that will characterize the last days. In 2 Timothy 3, 1-5, Paul describes a society where people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, and without self-control. We see these signs around us, reminding us to stay vigilant and grounded in our faith. In the midst of these warnings, the Bible consistently calls us to repentance and righteous living. The book of Revelation, for example, repeatedly emphasizes the importance of turning away from sin and following Christ wholeheartedly. There are three biblical warnings that we should take seriously. Warning number one, in Matthew 11, verse 24, Jesus delivers a solemn caution, but I tell you, that it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. This statement comes after Jesus rebukes the cities where he performed miracles, but they did not repent. This warning should pierce our hearts, reminding us of the grave consequence of rejecting the truth and failing to repent. It emphasizes the accountability we bear for the knowledge and opportunities we've been given. The day of judgment will hold us accountable not only for our actions, but also for our responses to God's grace and revelation. Warning number two. In Matthew 7, verse 21, Jesus issues a striking and thought-provoking warning. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. This caution highlights the importance of genuine faith and obedience rather than mere lip service or outward appearances. This passage challenges us to examine the authenticity of our relationship with God. It's not enough to profess His Lordship. Our lives must align with His will. It urges us to evaluate the sincerity of our faith by our actions, as genuine faith manifests itself through obedience and a transformed life. Warning number three, Revelation 20, verse 12 unveils a vivid picture of the final judgment. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. This warning reveals the reality of the final judgment, where every soul will be held accountable before God. This imagery underscores the ultimate accountability of humanity. It emphasizes the recording of our lives and deeds, signifying that each person will be judged according to their actions. The Book of Life, containing the names of those who belong to Christ, stands as the ultimate testament to salvation through faith in Him. So you see, these warnings serve as poignant reminders of our responsibility and accountability before God. They compel us to examine the sincerity of our faith, the authenticity of our repentance, and the alignment of our lives with God's will. Let us heed these warnings with earnestness, seeking a life of true devotion, genuine obedience, and an unwavering faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. May these warnings stir within us a desire for a deeper, more authentic relationship with God as we journey toward the eternal kingdom. The devil is committed to preventing people from knowing God and trusting him with their lives. The enemy's tactics do differ depending on whether someone is already a Christian or not, but his ultimate purpose is always to keep people from experiencing the love of God. Now, let me clarify this for everyone listening. Spiritual warfare is not something to be feared because the battle belongs to the Lord. This war is not one that we fight on our own, but 
We allow God to fight for us because it's only when we do this that we will be able to wage victorious spiritual warfare. This war affects every area of your life. There is no way you can avoid the conflict. A lot of Christians don't even know they're at war. But others can see the results of the battle in their lives because they have become casualties of spiritual warfare. They're discouraged, depressed, downtrodden, and defeated. Others are marital and family casualties. Divorce, conflict, and abuse are some of the battle scars these believers bear. Let me give you some insight on the enemy's strategy when it comes to spiritual warfare. There are four things the enemy sets out to achieve when he attacks believers. These four things are to discourage, to distract, to stir discontent, and to bring discord. Allow me to elaborate. The enemy seeks to discourage you from your faith. The enemy seeks to distract you from your calling with worldly pleasure and all manner of temptation. The enemy seeks to stir discontent in your physical life. And finally, the enemy seeks to bring discord between you and other believers to stop the unity of the gospel. So here's how you gain victory. The Bible tells us that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. It's important to take regular time alone with God, preferably as free from distractions as possible. Jesus wanted to give God his full attention and spend time with his heavenly Father. If even Jesus needed to withdraw from crowds and his friends to be alone with God, and Jesus is God, how much more do his followers need to do the same? Prayer is a powerful weapon for spiritual warfare. Prayer is you giving your battles to God. You're calling on Him to engage in the battle for you. According to Paul, when we are living according to the desires and purposes of our carnal nature, we cannot accept the things of God. So the question is, how do we discern? How do we know when we are more directed to satisfy the things of the flesh instead of the things that pertain to God? And furthermore, how do we know when the circumstances we go through are just life happening instead of a spiritual battle that we need to be warring against in the heavenlies? First of all, as a Christian, in order to discern whether we are more driven by the flesh, we must be willing to honestly answer some basic questions about ourselves. Do we spend more time thinking about what we want or how we want things to be? more than we spend time thinking about what God desires based on what he has said in his word. Jesus said, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Meaning, seek the Lord first. Put God first. Place him above everything else in your life, and place him before anything else in your life. Carnal-minded people tend to only call on God when they are in need. Spiritually-minded people keep God in the forefront of everything they do, and they do not do anything without Him. 